was not planning to be a model initially. Uh, I actually did English literature um, in uni and I planned to work in film, which I am going to go back into. So that was not the plan. <laughs> I was scouted in a shopping centre in Westfields. A lady was looking for like real people for her roster and then she said H&M were interested in, in using me for a campaign. I thought nothing of it, so I just went, did the campaign and then that's how everything started from there. The actual shoot itself was pretty straightforward. I didn't need a lot of direction, it was just stand there and pose basically. But um, the styling side, I did have to assist a little bit because they weren't prepared um, with the scarves. Obviously no one knew how to wrap a hijab. So the scarves they'd given me were really small. Um, so we had to sew there and then two scarves together so that it was long enough to wrap around my big head. <laughs> Initially shooting it didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought I was like an extra in a campaign, the same way you'd be like an extra in a movie. But it was only until the campaign came out. One, it was a really good message. It was about promoting recycling your clothes. So that's, that was really good. And that was a few years back. I know now more and more people and brands are talking about sustainability. So it was something I was proud of to do then. Um, so that meant a lot to me, as well as the fact that obviously I didn't realize that using someone in a hijab had not been done before. We already had this space, like a modest fashion industry of our own, but the mainstream had never recognised it as anything. They just saw it maybe as a cultural thing, um, and it hadn't really been incorporated with, with mainstream fashion houses. And so that was one aspect of it, the fact that we have, a, there's a demand for more modest clothing, but then also the aspect of representation was also important. So one side is the actual material, the clothing that we need. And then the second side was we need people that we can relate to as well, so that we know, oh wow, they're actually targeting people like us. Initially, I did get very mixed to responses, let's say, and, and some of them were very hateful. And I think it's because people didn't understand, uh, both from the Muslim and the non-Muslim community, like what's about to happen. That was amazing actually, because that happened at a time where I was really down. I, didn't, I left my old management, I left my modeling agency because I just feel like it still wasn't a big thing where people didn't know how to necessarily work with a woman in a hijab and how to market me. So I was like, I'd rather just do this on my own and work with the right person when, when that person comes. And in that space, um, that's when I got an email from Rihanna's team saying, hey, Rihanna wants to book you, are you free on these dates? And I was like, oh my God. And um, I was like in between a new management then. So it was perfect because everything just all came together at once. There's definitely been barriers, more with, I'd say, just people understanding how to market us because initially it was like, great, when there's a Ramadan campaign again or when Eid's coming up and it's like, we don't wear hijab on holidays or specific times of the year, we wear hijab all year round. So that's where one of my challenges has been trying to get people to understand that they should work with Muslim women or women of all different backgrounds, cultures, any time of the year. It shouldn't be just a tokenistic thing where it's for a specific moment. It's not just going to affect the fashion industry, but it will, it will change the mentality of, of people that are not interested in fashion because advertising is all around us. If you see a Muslim woman on a billboard, and you recognize the brand, you're then gonna be like, oh, wow. And it's opened so many careers for so many more women now. And that's not a coincidence again, because a lot of them wanted to be models. They actually had that career in mind, but it's all post that time. And then same with even fashion houses. There were already some collaborations going on of like DKNY and Uniqlo with um, Hannah Tajima. But I think it, in terms of it just really like the bubble bursting, the last couple of years we've seen so much growth. So it's really good. That's where I feel being a Muslim is really important in what I do because it's influenced so many different areas of my work. Obviously one, being a model wearing a hijab, <laughs> it's because I'm a Muslim, and then 
to with the charity work I do because it's a part of our faith, it's one of our pillars where you just have that awareness that I need to do more than just my job and because I, again I work for myself now so I, have to, I had to find angles in, in which I could you know be a, a positive influence in other areas away from just the work that I do in fashion. You look like you're starting to sweat. <laughs> All the kids are waiting for you to eat. <laughs> they were waiting, look how they're watching. <laughs> I love Disney, as we know, so Disney is definitely one of my, one of my passions. Um, I also want to get into voiceover acting, and that's probably connected to Disney because I want to be a hijabi Disney princess. <laughs> so voiceover acting is another thing I'm really interested in. And generally, I'm, I've been called a bit of a nerd, so I'm really interested in history, culture, religion, and that's one of the things I'm focusing on in my filmmaking. So making documentaries, telling our stories that haven't really been told and also just exploring things from a, a different lens. There's just too many of them. How are we supposed to get them out before mommy and daddy come home? Oh no. So aside from Rihanna, um, Victoria Beckham, I really feel like for a long time now she's been promoting modesty without even realising a lot of her, her designs are pretty modest. Um, and also Quavo from Migos. <laughs> so a lot of people think, well, he's a guy, but I just like his, I like the colours, I like his style, his energy with it as well, so yeah. So I've started saying a bit of an urban hippie. So like, I grew up in London, Northwest London, and there's obviously that urban uh, influence that we've had from our music, culture. And then the hippie side is like from my mum. She's always been a bit of a hippie. Uh, she's always loved very like cultural, ethnic prints. So just bringing that together, an urban hippie. <laughs> Uh, mum jeans, I'd say, and just a roll neck top. 